It feels like just yesterday when I was sitting here in this exact same spot in my living room talking to you guys about how Onshape was changing their terms of service and now I couldn't use their tool anymore. And it almost feels like we're now at the same point with Fusion 360. But it is a bit different. So today I want to talk about what exactly is changing with Fusion, um, a few clarifications on what that exactly means, and you know why I'm sticking with Fusion 360 and I think that you guys should too. So first of all let's go through what exactly their newest changes are and keep in mind that these changes only apply to the free for personal use tiers. So that's a version of Fusion 360 that costs you absolutely nothing that you can download and use for free for your own personal projects as long as you're not making a profit with them, as long as you're not selling them. There are also free versions for startups and for education, but of course there's also the paid plan that's between 60 and 23 bucks a month, depending on how long you subscribe for and whether you get it on sale or not. And all the changes that I'm talking about today only apply to the free for personal use plan. The startup, education and paid versions are staying exactly the same, those are not changing. So for that free version I would say there are four major changes that they're making. They are limiting what you can do with the cam tools for CNCing stuff, they are disabling extensions entirely, they are limiting what formats you can export to and there's going to be a restriction to 10 active designs at any time. Keep in mind that this isn't the first time that Autodesk is changing what the free plans are and what they can and cannot do. I mean they've changed what the paid plans are even. It used to be a much more expensive plan and then a base plan and now the paid plans are just one but also the free plans um, used to be able to do topology optimization um, which was I think uh, taken away shortly after I posted my video on the topology optimized shelf brackets which actually are still holding up strong, they're right behind the camera there. And then more recently they had a free trial for generative design which is a different approach to having your CAD tool automatically to create the geometry that you need and you know it's just little things, this comes, this goes, so that free plan especially is always kind of in flux. But these are some bigger changes now. And these changes now come at a time where I'm finally somewhat comfortable in Fusion 360 and I feel like I can work efficiently in there. Um, you might remember how reluctant I was to change to Fusion 360 because Autodesk always had that, that stigma of oh it's, it's unreliable and, and hastily put together software that looks good on paper but doesn't really work. And it's not quite that anymore, you know Fusion 360 has made some pretty big leaps in how reliable and how powerful it is in the last years. So to find out what those changes would really mean for makers like us, um, I hopped on a call with Mike Wakefield from the Fusion 360 team and you know try to, to figure out like why they're making those changes and what they are actually going to mean in practice. So first off the no more extensions. Now I was worried that they were going to limit you know what extensions and plugins you can use and what I'm using actually is the SVG export for the Shaper Origin that lets me use that tool in the first place because creating SVGs and making those geometrically accurate is not something that's particularly easy in uh, you know in, in Inkscape or Illustrator or other tools. And the good news is um, that that is not the type of extension or plugin that's going to be removed. The Shaper Origin plugin will still keep on working and I'll still be able to use that tool. Um, what they're actually removing are the advanced manufacturing extension or the simulation extension and the uh, generative design ones. So on the free plan there's now no way to unlock the simulation or advanced manufacturing or the generative design extensions, um, those are exclusive to the paid tier and fully featured versions. Of course with the simulation extension gone um, the topology optimization feature was a part of that simulation workspace so I don't think there are any chances of topology optimization returning into Fusion and yeah I don't know if you were using the advanced manufacturing extension, I wasn't. Simulation was nice to have but you know with simulation in general it's easy to create like nice pretty colorful pictures but getting useful data out of it is a bit tricky too and the generative design one you know even if you have that extension you still have to pay with cloud credits to actually get your designs out. So I don't see that as much of a loss. Then the limitations on CAM. So they're taking away all the features that are used for machines more capable than a three axis desktop machine. So if you have a, a Shape Boko or anything like that you can still totally use it. Um, the only limitation for that is that you cannot do rapid feed. So moving from one milling point to another is going to take a bit longer. That's an inconvenience but it doesn't make it 
unusable. Um, however, if you have something like a pocket NC that does 5x is milling, you're not going to be able to use that on the free plan anymore. Then limiting export formats. And I think this is one that, you know, a lot of people take offense to um, because they are limiting the export formats, the export file formats to basically formats that are not geometry accurate. So either it's proprietary uh, F3D files, which is, you know, from Fusion 360 to Fusion 360, but the big ones are STEP and DXF. So STEP is the industry standard file format that is going to give you as close to perfect surface and geometry as that file format can reproduce. So whereas an STL has like all little triangles and it, you know, is never perfect, STEP is perfect. And that's why it's used to exchange file formats between different CAD tools. So you could take a file from Fusion, export that as STEP, and then import it into SolidWorks, Onshape, uh, PTC, Creo, uh, any other CAD tool, and that will be as accurate as it gets. STEP is also useful for importing your designs into other CAM tools that are not integrated into Fusion. And that I think is where the, the bigger limitation in practice is. But it also means that you are kind of locked into Fusion right now. So with those export features gone, you have no way of getting your files out of Fusion if you want to switch to a different tool. Now, you can of course always buy a subscription for a month and just export all your stuff if you need to. Um, but if you just need a file here and a file there, that's not going to be possible anymore. You can still export DXF, which is a format that's useful for laser cutting, for example, but you can only export that from a sketch. You have to create a fresh sketch and then you can export that geometry as DXF. And then lastly, the 10 active documents. Now, this is a tricky one to figure out because there's there's, there's lots of ways to work around that and it's not really a hard limitation, it's really just a uh, an inconvenience. It's making some ways of working with Fusion more inconvenient. So the first thing I had to wrap my head around there was like what is a document? Because in Fusion what would typically be a, a file um, can be a lot of different things. It can be an assembly, it can be a single part, uh, it can be a multi-body part. So that wasn't really clear to me like at what level that 10 file limit was going to apply. So how it's going to work is actually pretty straightforward. So anything that is a file, so you open up your projects folder and you have all your files listed out, uh, you can have 10 of those active at any time. So that becomes a limitation when you have a bottom-up design where you have like every little screw that you draw in its own document and then you import those into an assembly file. You can only have 10 of those individual part files active at any time. Active or archive doesn't mean that, you know, the file is gone. It's just that you cannot edit it at that time. You can always switch between what documents are active and which are archived, and you can use those files just the same. You just can't edit them. But if you have a top-down design approach where you have one single file and then you draw all your parts in context and they're just components within one Fusion file, then you can have as many components as you want in that one file. So that, like I said, it, it really just limits how you work with a bottom-up design approach. A top-down one where you have one file that contains everything is going to give you practically no limitations. Of course, if you have a bunch of different projects that you're jumping between, you will need to set some files active and, and archived. The way that switching was presented to me was that it's not the intent to make that like a, a huge journey. It's just, you know, we have to actively switch between what documents are active and which are not. But again, it's more of an inconvenience than it is an actual feature limit. So what Mickey from Autodesk also tried to, to convey to me was that they really didn't want to have to take away features. They want to keep providing Fusion 360 for free for makers and provide the best version possible that they can. And that is quite a contrast to what I experienced with Onshape where they were like, well, you know, we got a free version, but we don't really care about it. We don't care about the non-paying users. It's just they're there, okay. Um, I'm getting a different vibe from Autodesk. You know, I remember Autodesk being at uh, 3D Meetup Sweden and actually having a booth there with some cool CNC stuff and giving a talk and, and doing some tutorials. And you know, that sort of engagement is what I feel is consistent with them saying, we want to commit to providing a, a great tool 
for free. But on the same hand, Autodesk is a company that needs to make a profit somehow. Like you can't just give your products away for free to everyone. And, you know, opposed to the other free products that you might be used to, uh, for example, YouTube, you're watching this video without paying for anything, you're using Gmail, you're using Facebook, you're using whatever else that you're not paying for, at least not with money, Autodesk have no way of monetizing the free version of Fusion 360. Uh, there are no ads in there. They're not selling you data, I hope. Um, you know, you, you could use the tool for, for literally free without ever paying a single penny. But what they're saying is, you know, if you're using our tools for profit and you're actually profitable, remember, there's still the startup tier that is fully featured, but still free if you're making less than 100 grand uh, worth of revenue a year. They're saying, well, in that case, maybe it's time to just grab a subscription. Like, you know, here's, here's a sale, here's 40% off. It's not even that expensive. And yeah, as a maker, if it's 60 bucks a month, it's, it's 23 a month if you get the three year subscription right now, um, it is a chunk of money. So I don't think that as a maker, a lot of you will be jumping on the big Fusion 360 subscription train. But the thing is, as a maker, I don't think these changes make all that much of a difference. I think the biggest one is really step export. But other than that, yeah, it's a, it's a few needle pricks, it's a few inconveniences. But for the vast majority of us makers using Fusion 360, I don't think these changes are limiting in any way what you can use it for. You can still use it for CAD, you can still build crazy assemblies, it's still free. And I don't know if entitlement is the right word for this, uh, with people enraged about these changes. But you gotta remember, you know, Fusion 360 is still free for personal use with, yes, a limited tool set, but it is free and it's available. Uh, they could just be saying, hey, we're not giving you a free version at all, which is what SolidWorks is, is doing. There's no free version of that, or there's no free version of, of uh, NX or, or Creo or any of the other tools available. Um, this is something that Autodesk don't really have to do. And I hope that this feature rot isn't gonna move over into other tools. Um, I mean, Mesh Mixer is owned by Autodesk, as is Eagle for designing PCBs, and that has always had a free and a paid version. I just hope that those tools are gonna stay as usable as they are right now. I do understand that you know, you're know you putting some time into it, and you're learning Fusion, and you've invested your time into the tool, and now it's doing less than it used to. Like I said, I think it's still perfectly usable. And that is why I think I'm gonna keep using Fusion. Um, for me, it's always about what can you guys do with the tool, even if I'm on the startup plan or influencer plan that is the fully featured one. Uh, I always wanna know like what can you guys do with it? Because you know, if I'm using some unobtainable tool, like it might be cool, but it's really not of value for you guys. So like I said, I'll keep using Fusions. I think it is still a great tool for you guys to use. And you know, if you need five axis cam to post to your DMG Mori, or you know, you need the step exports to file your parts into your company's PDM, then maybe you shouldn't be using the personal version anyways. So I hope this video kind of clarified what those new changes are and, and what I think they impact or don't impact. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, get subscribed, and if you really dig what I'm doing here, you can support this channel on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. So thank you for watching, keep on making, even with the small free version of Fusion 360, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.